Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before I begin this uh, tonight's video, I wanted to give a quick thanks to Rob Collins of the channel Linux Quest for joining me yesterday for the Linux Live UK show. I believe this was the first show I've done live during the day. And I know some of you who live outside of the United States, you wanted to join in at a better hour. That's not too late for you guys. So you asked and I finally done it and it was a lot of fun. So somebody asked who was I talking to just search the Linux Quest channel here on YouTube. And if you missed it, don't worry, I will probably host another one here sometime soon. And I, and I think it's time we'll talk a little bit about the um, well, the controversy and the chaos that's been happening on YouTube with the advertisers pulling out. And it appears that a million dollars of advertising may be lost this year. So we'll talk about that. I'll probably have a fundraiser for the channel. It's something that's been on my mind for a while. And, and, I, and I, I think now is the time to uh, talk about it and uh, move on from there. Okay, so for this one, let's talk about uh, Linux Mint updates and the different levels of updates if, if you have a Linux Mint based operating system. So let's talk about the update manager briefly. Level 1 updates, these are certified packages. These packages have been tested or directly maintained by Linux Mint. They're recommended to be updated when updates are available. That is that is level 1. Level 2, recommended packages. All packages are tested and approved by Linux Mint. Also recommended to be update, updated. Level 3, safe packages. All level 3 packages are not tested, but considered to be safe. Recommended to be updated as well. Unsafe packages. Updates classified as level 4 could have a potential negative effect on system stability. These selected by default for safety and visibility. Finally, level 5, dangerous packages. Updates classified as level 5 could have a negative impact on system stability depending on the system hardware and specifications. Also deselected for safety and visibility. Although there are users who claim that level 4 and level 5 updates disrupt their systems when it comes to stability, there are plenty of other users who select level 4 and level 5 for updating and not having any problems with their system after updating. Now I know that this can be somewhat confusing. So let's go to what I have available for updates and then I'll explain to you what I normally do. Okay, so let's go ahead and click refresh here and see what we have. See if there's anything else that needs to be updated. Probably not too much. I normally I normally keep my systems uh, up to date as much as possible. Okay, so we have three. If you hover over, first of all, we have level three, three, and five. So if, if you hover over each one here, we have a software update, security update, and the Linux kernel. Well, yeah, I would probably classify the Linux kernel as part of the security update. So most people who are new to this would probably just click these two here and leave this one unclicked. So if we go to this one here, it says the Linux kernel is, res is responsible for hardware and driver support. Note that this update will not remove your existing kernel. You will still be able to boot with the current kernel by choosing the advanced options in your boot menu. I believe that is part of the recovery mode if I recall correctly. And I've only had to use that once or twice to go back to a previous kernel. Continuing, please be cautious though. Kernel regressions can affect your ability to connect to the internet or to log in graphically. DKMS modules are compiled for the most recent kernels installed on your computer. If you are using proprietary drivers and you want to use an older kernel, you will need to remove the new one first. So, doing this for many years, almost 10 years, and I think I've only had a problem once or twice. Normally, you should install and update whatever updates are available because updating the Linux kernel is also part of a security update. And if for some reason you updated this kernel 
and you reboot and something's not right you can always go back to the previous version of the kernel so in my opinion does level 5 do level 5 updates do they have the potential to disrupt the system possibly but I have found out that at least in Ubuntu based systems speaking strictly for myself testing in multiple machines it is rare and once again if something happens after this update level 5 you can always go back I have at least to the previous kernel now it, it was mentioned here proprietary drivers I don't have any propri proprietary drivers um, speaking of my graphics card because there aren't any updated drivers available for my specific graphics in this desktop so that is not going to be an issue the point is you should update if you have Linux Mint I would run all the updates as needed and if you have to go back to the previous kernel you certainly can but that Linux kernel that is part of the security patch update whatever you want to call it that is important to keep your Linux Mint operating system secure that's all I have to say for this one there's more talk about it. now the reason one of the reasons why I'm talking about this tonight the latest um, Mincast podcast uh, talks about this uh, process in a little bit more detail uh, you may want to take a listen to that but my final thoughts are still they remain go ahead and update everything that you see here when you go to install your updates on your Linux Mint system those are my thoughts on this thank you so much for watching subscribe and support this total OS today technology channel and I'll catch you next time on the live event so take care